Hello friends, this is Jasu Bakuhatsu, and welcome back to Let's Play Plock for the Super Nintendo. So yeah, I mentioned earlier how the level design in this game is great, and this is, or this, you know, kind of hit or miss, but can get uh, really good when it's good. And uh, this is kind of the point, the good, that good meaty center of the game that I was talking about, where uh, it gets, gets uh, really fun and uh, really just uh, creative and... Uh, just very interesting level design, I think, and that's because kind of the whole approach to the levels here changes. The levels are much larger, uh, much more wide open, and uh, the whole basically game concept, uh, yeah, the whole objective changes really. Uh, we're now on basically a flea hunt where we've got to find all of the fleas in each level and murder them all, exterminate every last one of the goddamn bastards to get my flags back. And uh, so that's what we're going to be doing. It, it sounds like almost like it might be kind of irritating, just like, you know, going on basically a big enemy hunt through these uh, big old levels. And, you know, it it usually is bad when games kind of take that approach to level design, you know, kind of that collective thon almost mentality where you got to scour every inch of the level looking for the MacGuffin so that you got to get to finish the level. But uh, Honestly, those kinds of games can be very fun, though, if you have kind of a very strong level design that kind of does a good job of pointing the player in the right direction and giving them kind of interesting things to explore and discover and making sure that there's good uh, shortcuts and that the levels kind of loop in and around on themselves in good ways to make uh, travel more ease, more amenable to the player. And uh, that's basically what these levels do uh, very well, I think. Or actually, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to go to another little bonus stage here. Gotta get, build up those shells, because like I said, basically... Okay, basically, might as well spoil it now. We're in for a mountain of garbage uh, once we get to the end of the game. Like I said, this is the good part of the game, the good, fun part of the game. But uh, once we get to the end of this LP, uh, we are in... F you will be in for a lot of salt, I promise you that. Uh, the last few... Basically, the last major area of the game, the, once the flea pit, is absolutely just abominable garbage that I absolutely despise. And it's tough as balls, too. I honestly don't even know if I'll be able to get through it uh, without using continues, which is a really bad thing. So actually, that's another thing to mention, maybe. So you notice, I've actually, I've probably got a couple plot continues at this point. So what does that even mean? Or actually, it's not time to go up there. I need to go this way. Uh, basically, each time you clear a level, you get a, one of the letters in plot. Also, there's some, uh, ob some objects uh, hidden in some levels that'll also get you plock letters. And once you, uh, basically once you get four of, all four letters spelled out, you get a plock continue, which is basically a checkpoint. Uh, once you get a plock continue, um, if you, if you game over at that point, then the game will just send you back to whatever level, whatever the level was that you got your last plock continue, which, if you think about it, uh, basically means that every time you game over, uh, you've got to replay the last several levels and like I said, uh, the levels in this game, at least in kind of the main Acrylic Island section, is uh, are very expansive, very large, and take a decent bit of time to complete, which means that if you end up having to use a plot continue, uh, you can be set back like a good like 15-20 minutes as a result of having to continue, which can be a, just a gigantic pain in the ass. To the point where I honestly, I usually don't even bother. If I game over in this game, I usually just quit right there and call it a failed run. Which is why this LP might get kind of intense later on. And it's for exactly that reason, because we got all that bullshit coming up in the flea pit, and I, I sure as hell do not want to have to replay a single goddamn level in the flea pit. So uh, I'm, I'm going to be wanting to stock up on lives, which uh, basically seashells in order to get as many lives as possible for the end game. But, uh, so yeah, we've got that to look forward to, but, uh, until, until then, uh, yeah, like I said, it's, and I, I might be, I should probably talk a little bit, or actually, you know what I should mention, probably should have gone over this in the first video, is, uh, maybe kind of the history of Plock. It turns out I did a little bit of research, because I, I noticed on the title screen that this game was actually made by Software Creations, who, for those of you who follow my channel, I guess, might recognize, uh, they were the guys who made the last game that I LP'd, uh, The Incredible Crash Dummies, for the Nintendo, which I thought was kind of interesting. I kind of looked, I kind of did a little bit of research to see if there was any connection there, and it turns out uh, there isn't really. Either Software Creations was like either maybe a big company, or they had maybe like a cycled through employees quickly, but as far as I can tell, nobody who worked on the Incredible Crash Dummies uh, worked on Plock, other than uh, 
the uh, the Folan brothers, uh, Jeff and Tim Folan, I hope I got their names right, uh, who did the music for this game, as well as uh, those incredible Crash Dummies, which, uh, yeah, in case you didn't notice already, uh, the soundtrack in this game is phenomenal. Honestly, I think one of the best on the Super Nintendo, if not, yeah, I'd say probably in my like, top five, maybe even top three soundtracks on the Super Nintendo. Uh, just uh, excellent stuff. Which probably, and actually this is the perfect time to mention it, because it probably didn't really come through in the uh, Cotton Island section of the game, where you basically hear the same kind of not-so-great track in every single level. Whereas uh, once you get to Acrylic Island, even the, even the music is better on Acrylic Island. Because uh, they, they, they change up the music a lot more too, and all of the music on Acrylic Island is also just a lot better than it was on Cotton Island. But yeah, these first few acrylic levels are uh, not too difficult. Or actually, you might as well use this. It's just a tiny little shortcut. Doesn't take us past anything. Uh, this is this is where we kind of get to see kind of the fun sort of crea creative elements where the game kind of plays around uh, with the sort of basic mechanics of the game. So yeah, I haven't even described uh, kind of the basic stuff that's going on. Most of it should have been self-explanatory, but yeah, uh, you've got you. Block fires off his limbs to attack enemies. He's got two different kinds of jumps. Uh, it's so his high jump kind of looks... So you can press A to get like a little spin jump like that, which looks kind of dangerous and you might think is some kind of attack, but it actually isn't. That's actually... Uh, yeah, you basically have... You can't attack in a spin jump, so that's kind of your trade-off. You got your regular hoppy jump, which uh, you can attack in midair doing that jump, and you've also got the high... The high floaty jump, good for platforming, but uh, you can't attack in midair while doing it, so there's kind of a trade-off there. And actually, uh, knowing when, which type of jump to use in what situation is uh, can be tricky at times. And uh, yeah, the level, and again, the level design so, uh, tend to do a good job of uh, so, sort of having a good variety of situations that make both jumps. Uh, useful throughout the game. You don't always be wanting to do the spin jump or always wanting to do the regular jump. And actually, this is the, so you can see here, we've lost all our limbs at this point, used them all up on the target things, and we've got no attacks and no legs, it turns out. We've got to hop around, but uh, this actually introduces a mechanic that'll be uh, sort of all, used again later on to slightly more annoying effect in later levels. But uh, yeah, basically whenever you get uh, those costumes inside the gift packages. Uh, it restores all your... restores all of your health, or not your health, all of your limbs. There's actually a hidden fruit here. I'm just gonna pick it up because I need the health. Actually, another benefit of the uh, costumes here, not just you get these this lovely background music. I love how there's, there's unique background music for even all of the different uh, potential costume power-ups, which is pretty cool. But uh, yeah, you'll notice that the Costume power-ups also uh, increase your sort of attack power. Not really your attack power, but it reduces the amount of invincibility frames that enemies get. Which is kind of another slightly annoying thing about the game that I'm not really a fan of. I think all the enemies uh, just stay invincible for far too long. It can, it can be really annoying sometimes, especially when dealing with these fleas. Which is actually another thing that uh, the Child's Play difficulty fixes. All the enemies get uh, reduced invincibility frame times on Child's Play difficulty. And actually, I guess while I'm griping on small things, uh, the game's camera, it, it, it kind of has a common problem I've seen and kind of... Honestly, a lot of obscure, lesser-known, so, sort of not... That, you know, you had your big players back in the day for 2D platformers, your Konamis, your Capcoms, and of course your Sega and your Nintendo. And like a lot of the other... Basically, a lot of the more obscure companies producing 2D platformers back in the day didn't really have as good a grasp on how to do a, two, a 2D platformer camera in those days. You'll notice Plock is slightly ahead of center here, which uh, actually also compounds the problem where enemies kind of rush at you faster than you can react to them. And yeah, it actually was. It is actually kind of a big problem, especially in those early Cotton Island levels, and then again in Legacy Island, which we'll come to. Uh, shortly, it turns out, actually. But, uh, whoops. And apologies, but I, again, I do kind of want to be thorough about clearing out these levels, because... It's like, yeah, I want to... It's... Yeah, in most games I wouldn't care about this, but this game is just so challenging, and I want so badly not to have to use a freaking plot continue and uh, redo, like, 10, 20 minutes worth of progress, that I just... I really... It's like, you know, every life matters. <laughs> I'm sorry. Indeed, you might even say that all lives matter when you're playing Plock. 
That was that's a dreadful thing to say. I'm very sorry. All lives matter? No, that's garbage. Plock lives matter. <laughs> yes. Hashtag plock lives matter. Spread it. <laughs> and uh, anyway, sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and uh, that's... Uh... And so speaking of plock lives, I guess, or, or uh, the, the character of plock in general. Yeah, I was uh, starting to get into that. So yeah, this game was developed by Software Creations and... Uh, and it turns, turns out uh, no connection to the Crash Dummies game I, that was the subject of uh, one of my more recent LPs. But uh, it turns out that the, the the character plot just seems... This whole game is just such a weird concept. It's like, yeah, you got this guy with like this red... I, it looks almost like an executioner's hood and he shoots off his limbs and is apparently like very vain and loves having flags with his picture on them all over his island that he's... This giant island that he has to himself for some reason, with like no friends, and he's fighting fleas for control of the island's flag. It's just such a weird concept. And then it's like all the, you know, the costumes, and you, you can shoot bees as well. That's what those beehive power ups I've been collecting do. The, the bees can actually be t somewhat useful in uh, some of the later stages, actually. I keep forgetting to use them just because it's such a weird mechanic that just kind of comes out of nowhere. But uh, yeah, you can, you can shoot bees <laughs> by collecting beehives. But it's such a weird concept. It's like, whose idea was this? Like, Plock. Who came up with it? Turns out that uh, Plock was actually kind of a... Kind of the, the brainchild, kind of a labor of love, almost, uh, of uh, two game designers at Software Creations, uh, John and Stee Pickford, the Pickford brothers. And, uh, yeah, it turns out that they really... Uh, apparently, they kind of put a lot into this game, and they kind of really wanted it to be a success, which it unfortunately wasn't. But, uh... It, it turns out, though, that uh, their story has a bit of a happy ending. It turns out that uh, uh, the, Pickford, the Pickford brothers are actually still active uh, on the internet in sort of the game development to these day. To this day, they have a website, and it turns out they have a Plock webcomic, which actually shocked me to no end. I was astonished to find this, but yeah, it turns out there's a the Plock webcomic is alive and well. Apparently, been running for about two years. He's uh, he's he's Plock the ex exploding man now for some reason. But uh, yeah, th there's a wealth of information online about the Pickford brothers and the character Plock and this game and all their games. So you can uh, you can you can just Google uh, Pickford brothers and uh, you'll find out. You can research whatever you want about them. It's it's kind of interesting. They have a actually a fairly extensive library of stuff that they've worked out on on at, when they were at Software Creations. And again, they're active even to this day, which is kind of impressive. In fact, I'll, I'll put a link in the description. Pickford Brothers. And actually, that's uh, pretty much the way we're probably going to end this video. We're on to Legacy Island now, which is basically Cotton Island uh, 2.0 here. Uh, I didn't really get much time on Acrylic Island. The way this is paced is kind of weird, actually. You get, like, what, two acrylic levels, and then on to basically Cotton Island 2.0, like I said. Same kind of level of design and approach, just these short little challenges with very fast <laughs> logs and garbage coming at you. And, uh, so yeah, that, I, mean, I guess that's what you have to look forward to in the uh, next episode. I will see you all then, and, uh, yeah, thank you all for watching.